21st century, we're talking about critical thinking again. And I think this image illustrates one of the reasons why we're talking about it again is because of the technology. Our students are receiving information from their mobile devices, but are they asking the right questions? And we get terms like fake news, post-truth, these kinds of new vocabulary that's emerging to talk about the issue of where we get information from. The question is, how does this affect the English language teacher? Well, let me give you a real example of how it might affect an English language teacher. I have a group of students, I said they're refugees, sort of low-paid workers, they're elementary level, but they're not really, they're kind of beginner and know nothing through to pre-intermediate. You know those kinds of classes? <laughs> you call them the elementary class, but actually there's every kind of level in there, and it's a real challenge. Um, I have one student who's been coming for about two years, he's from East Timor, and he's very enthusiastic, very passionate, really wants to learn English, but finds it incredibly difficult. I don't think he really went to classes much in his own country, I don't think he's had much formal education, so when he first arrived in my class, if I said get into pairs and talk to your partner, he'd just like, what, what we do? He had no idea. Anyway, he'd be coming for two years, and one day he came to class, very friendly, very excited. He'd got his first mobile phone since arriving in the UK. He had two years without a phone. Got his phone, really excited, shows it to me, shows it to all the other students, and everybody smiles and nods. Yeah. And I have my students in a horseshoe, and this student from East Timor always sits there on the right, close to me because he believes somehow he'll learn better the closer he is to the teacher. Get more information from me by being closer to me. And I'm doing a lesson on second-hand objects, and I've stayed up late the night before making adverts with pictures of objects and text like for sale, second-hand bicycle, and the price, to help my students go out and buy second-hand objects in, in, in Oxford, okay? And they need that vocabulary. So I've made different adverts and I hand them out to the students and to my student from East Timor, he's got an advert with a photograph of a desk and a chair and it says for sale, desk and chair and then it has a kind of description of the desk and chair. And I give them a reading task to do and I'm walking around the class monitoring, helping students with any vocabulary and I look across at my student from East Timor and he's got his new mobile phone and he's typing into it. And I'm thinking, what is he doing? What is he typing? So I go over to him, look down, and he's typing in D E S K. And he's got Google Translate open. And I'm looking as the teacher, thinking, I'm useless. Because I've made this, I stayed up late making this nice material, photograph of a desk and chair. It has the words desk and chair. Don't you just look at desk and think, okay, that's a desk, that's a chair. Just learn the vocabulary like that. And inside I'm going crazy, and outside I'm being very patient and understanding. You know that feed, that teacher feeling that you have? So I'm looking down. And I, and I point at the word desk, point at the photo of desk, and I walk away, and I continue walking. And then I look back, and he's still typing. And he's typing C-H-A-I-R. And I'm thinking, oh, crikey, forget it. And I walk off, and then finally he waves me over, and he's waving his phone at me to say, yes, teacher, Google Translate has confirmed that you are correct. <laughs> Which race?